So what we've done up to, up to this point is put the code into the cell click of the data grid view one so, th so that whenever the company is clicked, it gets the company ID, calls the get company products, and then populates the, the child grid view with, the, with that data. And then what we do in the, in the child grid view is when the user clicks on that, uh, it gets the current date and the creation date of that part, and it calls the get part age function in the product list class and shows you the name. So let's, so let's run it. In part two, we're going to modify and reuse the product list class from lesson five. We're going to modify data to support C sharp logic. We're going to modify and rename lesson five class and make it abstract. We're going to create inherited products class and we're going to modify the company data access component to use inherited class method. When we implement inheritance in this part, we're, we're going to, to create a method that's called get part discount and it's going to be based on the age of parts. And so basically if the age is between 100 and 200 days, the part discount will be X. If it's greater than 200 and less than 300, it'll get a different discount. And so it's important that you come in and you have test data. Num number one, make them round so, so you can easily see that the correct uh, discount is being applied. And at the same time, you know, make sure that you have your your creation date values you know some of them need to be but great greater than 100 and, and less than 200 days from today uh, others needs to be greater than 200 and less than 300 uh, days from today or older than 300 and less than 365 days from the current date so we're going to make some pretty significant changes to product list we're going to rename that to be products product let's open it up and make these changes so it's going to be a public we're going to make it an abstract class and it's going to be called product i'm going to make these protected Rename our constructors. Let's make this change here. It's a little, it looks a little bit better, I think, whenever we do it this way. And we're going to set M part ID equal to value Let's do the same oops you know let this one be set as well m price equal value read only. I'm going to leave this one as read only. And replacement part ID, we're going to let that one be changeable. Set M replacement ID equal value. 
copy that, and then we'll add an abstract function, public abstract void get part discount. And it's going to take a products, a product class. Whenever you make a method abstract, it means that when you inherit from it, that that method must be implemented. So now we will inherit from the product class. We'll create a public class. We'll call it product list. And it will inherit from product. I went ahead and created two constructors uh, for the product list class. Uh, the, the first one has the same parameters as the product class, which is a part ID, decimal price, a string product description, date time creation date, and a string replacement date. I use the base uh, description because the product class has more than one constructor, so I'm telling it which con constructor to use because, as you know, the the base class constructor is always uh, executed before any derived class. And I also created a constructor uh, that had no parameters. And if we try to run it, you'll, you'll see how, how I mentioned that because we made the method uh, get part discount abstract, if we try it, try and run it, we'll get an error. And it says because the get part discount is not implemented and it must be implemented uh, if we make it abstract.